Hello, welcome to Ed Reviews Anything. Almost. So, as they say about necessity being the mother of an invention, in this case, necessity was the mother of my purchase. Since I have two Yorkshire Terriers now, and the daylight hours are growing shorter, it is uh, not really feasible to hold a leash in each hand and also a flashlight. Although I do use uh, the smaller everyday carry flashlights, but still is a little bit of a pain. So I decided to get the uh, headlamp here from Phoenix. Uh, the model number on it is HM65R-T version 2.0 as if those model numbers mean a whole heck of a lot to anybody, except maybe the manufacturer, they may use them for something, who knows. But in any case, it has two light sources on it. One of them is supposed to be a spotlight and the other is a floodlight. And it's rated at 1600 lumens and says it'll throw up a beam 170 meters, which is see, about 530 feet. Hey Siri, convert 170 meters to feet. 170 meters is 557.74 feet. Okay, so I was off about 20 feet. It also has some ratings on the back here. And for the white light, which I believe to be the spotlight, it says 1600 lumens output and a runtime of three hours and a distance of 170 meters and gives an intensity of 7353 candela. And lumens and candela are both measures of light intensity, but uh, lumen uh, is more of a directed beam, and candela would be over a surface area. So uh, if you want more information on that, uh, Google it. But basically most everybody uses lumens uh, for their measurement. Now, uh, Phoenix does say that they have in fact measured these things in laboratory conditions. And let's see, uh, where was that? Oh, let's see here. So according to their standard, the above specifications are from the uh, results produced by the Phoenix. I'm having a hard time reading this tag gum thing. I'm going to give up. And grab an iPhone here and go to the little uh, magnifying app. It's getting pretty bad when the uh, writing is so small you can't even read it with your reading glasses. All right, this looks like it might be a little bit better here. So according to the ANSI slash Plato FL1 standard, so that's what I couldn't read there before. I didn't want to try to pronounce because I couldn't really read it. The above specifications are from the results produced by Phoenix through its laboratory testing using the included Phoenix ARB-L18-3400 battery under the temperature of 21 degrees plus or minus 3 degrees Celsius and humidity of 50% to 80%. The true performance of this product may vary according to different working environments and the actual battery used. The high output is measured in total of runtime, including output at reduced levels due to temperature or protection mechanism in the design. So in other words, at three hours, they said, uh, may not be three hours at actually 1600, but uh, it's three hours at 1600 selected, but it'll probably throttle back on you. And medium intensity is 400 lumens and 12 hours and 80 83 meters and low intensity is 130 lumens, 24 hours and 49 meters. And that low intensity they uh, advertise for trail running, so they say it's good for 24 hours there. Now on the warm white light, which I believe to be the floodlight, we're saying uh, 800 lumens uh, is the high output with 6 hours and 112 meters and medium will give you 400 lumens, 12 hours and 82 meters and low will give you 130 and 24 hours and 48 meters. And eco will give you five lumens, 300 hours, 10 meters. And SOS is five lumens, 600 hours, 10 meters. So, you know, I have other flashlights that produce five lumens. That's not a heck of a lot of light. So there you go. So in any case, like I say, had to get this because walking my dogs, I need to keep my hands free. So let's open her up here and see what she looks like. Well, there we go. Okay, get rid of that. So we got our headband and the headband is adjustable. And they were saying there was two ways to adjust it. So it looks like a little crank mechanism here. Although that appeared to be as tight as it would go right there. So the other method for adjusting it. 
is, well, if there's two methods for adjusting it, I don't see them. Maybe I read that wrong. And got the usual USB-A to USB-C. That's about the 78th one of them I've had. Let's see here. I wonder if they've got a little uh, shield in there to keep the battery from discharging in transit. It's possible. I've gotten some flashlights that had that and some that didn't. So we'll just go ahead and open this one with this one up. And yep, sure enough. It had the little protective disc in there to keep it from discharging. So while we got it open here, we'll take a look. And yes, 3400 milliamp hour battery. You know, I am not real sure why a battery needs to have an FCC rating on it, but it's got one. I think that's just a little ridiculous. Maybe it's because of the SOS emergency flash function on the light. You reckon? Y'all seen any sarcastic hillbillies lately? Well, let's see if it's charged up a little bit. Does not appear to have a charge as I have pressed both buttons. Press them both at once. Nope. Does not look like it has a charge. So we'll take a little time out here. Plug her into a charger. I guess the first thing I need to do is find out where the USB-C port is. It got to be on there somewhere. Oh, I think we done found that USB-C port right there. Okay, well, let me drag one of my charging cables over here, plug that thing up. So, we'll come back in about an hour, see how much charge we got. Well, to uh, take a look at the reason I didn't think there was any charge in the battery on unboxing, you'll notice uh, when I pulled the battery out to see if there was a shield to prevent discharge, the uh, negative terminal was facing outward. And when I turned it around after examining the uh, battery and put it back into the flashlight, you'll notice that the positive terminal is facing outward. This is what we call an absent-minded hillbilly. So there you go. Just wanted to drop that in there. Well, now for a little practical test of the flashlights. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, Phoenix headband first. And as we said, it's got the warm light and the cool light. The uh, warm light uh, has a maximum uh, intensity of 800 lumens. And the cool light has a maximum intensity of uh, 1600 lumens. So let's take a look at the warm light first. And that's the lowest level on the warm light, five lumens. And uh, then we'll step up. I'm not really sure how many lumens that is. One more time and then one more time. So that's the max of 800 lumens on the warm light, which is a daggum good light. Uh, the top of the little ridge there, I'm shining my light on. <clears throat> I'm estimating it's probably about 70 feet away from where I'm sitting. And then we'll take a look at the cool light and that's the minimum setting in the cool light. It's not five lumens, it's more than that. I think it's like 130. And then there's the mid-level, and there is the 1600 uh, lumen level. And I'm gonna primarily work with the, uh, the warm light, or the correction, I'm gonna primarily work with the uh, cool light here. So I've got several flashlights to compare it against. Now this is one of my really old flashlights, so that's the, uh, the Phoenix headband there, so we'll turn it off. Uh, this one is my old um, uh, E2D Defender, and it is 600 lumens. And let's just turn the, uh... I daggum it. Okay, so there's the maximum level on the uh, Phoenix headband, the, uh, the cool light. And there is the 600 lumens from the uh, old E2D Defender. And I've had this light probably uh, 12 years or more. Uh, so you can see the, um, the headband outshines the old E2D Defender pretty good, although the E2D has a more concentrated beam and the headlamp throws a little wider beam. So uh, that's kind of personal choice, I suppose. And next up uh, to compare it is the Sofran uh, LED. And... Uh, Oh, by the way, that Phoenix, or not Phoenix, the uh, E2D Defender is not rechargeable. It uses regular batteries. But here is the, uh, there is the uh, Sofran light. And that is supposed to be 1600 lumens. Or, correction, that's supposed to be 1800 lumens. So there's the 1600 lumens from the uh, headband. And there's the 1800 lumens from the, uh, Sofran light. And we'll turn it off. Now, one of the things about that Sofran light is I never can find the little flush 
switch on the thing. So uh, that's one of my gripes I have about that light. I've got another review coming up on it. Now lastly, we have the uh, Phoenix uh, PD36R Pro, and it has a maximum output of uh, 2800 lumens. And that is what you're looking at right there. So you see I shine my uh, headband in there, and it doesn't really make a heck of a lot of difference. But there's the headband, and there's the uh, 36R Pro shining over the top of it. So definitely the 1600 lumens there is not nearly as strong as the 1800 lumens there. Now the uh, 36R does have four different levels, actually five different levels, I'm staying corrected. There's the lowest one. I don't know what the lumen rating is, but it looks pretty low. It might be like five lumens. Step two, step three, step four, and step five. So there you go. That's the, uh, the review of the uh, headband lamp versus some other standard flashlights. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.